Stars, Next Improv Stars, Season 3. How are y'all doing tonight? Woo! All right. Welcome to Denver's premier improv reality show. If you've never seen the show before, how it works is it's part improv, part reality. The improv part, we're going to get some really talented people out here on stage. They're going to create scenes and characters and funny stuff right off the top of their head without any planning or preparation based on your suggestions. But it's also a reality show. Every night, someone will win a fabulous prize. We'll talk about that a little later. And every night, someone goes home, and the improv star journey ends. Ooh, we started out with 14. We are now down to 13. This is week two. Look. We, can do, we can do the math. Oh, we gotta go to 13 somehow. So, to help us decide what goes on every night, we've got some judges. Let me introduce two of our regular judges, Eric Ferrone and Carl Anderson. This is Eric Ferrone. Oh, hi. He is the artistic director here at the Bovine Metropolis Theater. He's been improvising for over 20 years. This is Carl Anderson, one of our instructors and coaches here at the Bovine Metropolis Theater. He's been improvising for over 15 years. So, you guys excited to be here tonight? I am. Yeah, yeah. it is a crazy night tonight. It is a crazy night. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Some surprises. As <laughs> always. Well, yeah. let's get to let's, it. Let's, yeah. let's get to it. So you guys take a seat. You guys ready to meet our contestants? Denver's next improv star. One of these people will be Denver's next improv star and win our grand prize of the Jumping Into the Unknown prize pack. Sponsored by Sky Venture Colorado, an indoor skydiving facility. The prize includes a party for 12 at their facility, one-on-one -on -one coaching with a indoor skydiving instructor, and, a, and a catered by Jason's Deli. So skydiving and sandwiches, all at stake here. <laughs> well, that's the grand prize tonight. Tonight's show is brought to you by the Bovine Metropolis Theater. <laughs> and of tonight's show, we'll win the Embodied Improvisation Workshop, a three-week improv workshop that is all about getting out of your head and into your body, taught by our very own Eric Ferrone! So that starts next Tuesday, and I believe there are still spaces available. Yes! <laughs> now every week we've got a different guest judge, but tonight we've got something a little different. We've got three guest judges, all, member, all members of our Bobine Metropolis Coaches Council. Help me welcome Kat Vaughn, Keith Rains, and Spencer Rybecki! Don't, don't, don't go away, Keith. I gotta talk to you. I wanna sit. In a moment, Keith. So for those of you who don't know, we've got several house teams here at the Bovine Metropolis, and each of them has a coach, and collectively all those coaches make up the Coaches Council. So tonight we've got a sampling of that Coaches Council. We've got Keith Rains, who coaches the Fillers, which places on Friday night, is that correct? Yes. Friday night. Spencer Rybecki is the coach of Platypus Surprise, which plays on Thursday nights. Yeah, I got a fan. A big fan. So got <laughs> Kat Bondo is the coach of the Factors, which plays on Thursday nights. So, what are you guys going to be looking for in the improv tonight? Keith. I love to see players who show and don't tell. I love to see players who believe what they're doing, and I love to see just a little bit of what happened in the beginning show up again near the end. All right, Spencer, what are you looking for? I'm going to be uh, looking for players who are committed completely to what they've chosen to do and are completely selling whatever they're choosing to put out there. I like players who have a sense of theater and theatricality, who know what the story's about, and also who make choices that even surprise themselves in the moment. Wow. That sounds wonderful. All right, well, you guys go ahead and take a seat. Before we get to our Lanny's Clock Terror Cabaret Immunity Challenge, we're going to start things off 
with a preliminary challenge. Now, all the players have been handed out slips of paper with either a one or a two of them. You're going to get all the ones on this side of the stage and all the twos on that side of the stage. And Spencer Rybacki will explain our preliminary challenge. All right. We, uh, you guys, are going to be playing a game called World's Worst. It's a very common short form game. Uh, that we play here uh, in Planet Post Surprise and in On The Spot. Uh, in the game, you guys are going to be providing the world's worst things to do or say with an audience suggestion for a social situation, profession, and a motto for a location. So can we get group one out here? And from our audience, our lovely beautiful audience here, can I get a uh, social situation that was maybe awkward for you guys recently? Awkward. Interview. Awkward. Interview. Interview. These are the world's worst things to do or say in an interview. GED required? <laughs> <laughs> no, I sweat a lot. Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> I'm really not qualified to serve fast food. <laughs> I've been convicted of stealing six times. <laughs> I don't like to take tests, typing tests, drug tests. I don't like them. I'm going to take the initiative and interview you! <laughs> Previous criminal history, assault, A-S-S-A-L-T. <laughs> you know, I like UCRs and uh, got great people skills. Another social situation that's awkward recently for you guys. I heard first date. Um, so these are the world's worst things to do on a first date. So, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I've been tried five times but never convicted. <laughs> Kids? Yeah, I'm pregnant right now. <laughs> no, I'd never adopt. That's idiotic. <laughs> room at the Hyatt. You want to go? <laughs> so I've been watching you for a while. <laughs> I've always wondered what you'd look like without your clothes on. <laughs> so I know this is the first time we met, but I totally already stalked your Facebook profile and I know everything about you, so... <laughs> <laughs> so who's gonna pay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, room, you guys again. Uh, what is a profession you either want to do or currently do? Psychic <laughs> <laughs> reader. Oh, psychic reader. These are the yeah. world's worst. Yeah. Like, <laughs> three months. <laughs> I can already tell you that you look really bad today. <laughs> I don't really know what that means. What do you... Wait. Hold on, can you pay me first? <laughs> <laughs> Your love line? You don't have one. <laughs> You're going to die today. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh... <laughs> yes, yes, I see you're going to be rich and successful and psych! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what is another profession? Either maybe one you don't want to do. An accountant. An accountant. <laughs> Alright, these are one of those accounts. Um, A. <laughs> My iPhone has a calculator. <laughs> I'm pretty certain that two and two are five. Uh, no, 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 that's way too logical. Far too logical for this numbers game that we're in. <laughs> I got this gold tooth right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know about 
about money and counting and stuff. Just go ahead and give me some numbers. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jack Abramoff. <laughs> 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 Finally, uh, where is some place you uh, would uh, never like to go again? Provide Theater. <coughs> oh. Oh. Still staying there. <laughs> Vegas really is a three day max kind of trip. <laughs> Vegas, we've got shiny, shiny lights. <laughs> Vegas, you're gonna lose a lot of money. <laughs> We'll get you diarrhea in a hurry. <laughs> Mexico, coming to America soon. <laughs> Mexico, you probably won't get kidnapped. <laughs> Mexico, da 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 da. -da. <laughs> Mexico, you will die. <laughs> Mexico, mm, tequila. <laughs> Mexico! No, we are not all on siesta. <laughs> Mexico, you can start your own drug cartel. <laughs> Alright, so to get us started off, we're gonna have you, the audience, decide which team is our winner tonight. I'm gonna have you clap, I'm gonna point over at team one. You'll clap if you think team one should win. Point over at team two. You'll clap if you think she, Team 2 should win, and they will win our preliminary challenge. So you guys ready? All right. Figure it out in your minds so who you're going to vote for. <laughs> All right. If you think Team 1 should win, clap! Challenge, which starts now. So if you guys will go ahead and go out into the lobby, we will get ready. And team two, your prize is you get to go first. Before we have read the uh, challenge, if we could have all the players just once again just give us their names so that we have all of the judges are up to date. Maggie. John John. Leon. Natalie. Ashley. Jerry. And now, before I hand it over to Kat to explain what we're doing tonight, what's at stake here is immunity. Whoever wins this challenge will be immune from being eliminated tonight. The single individual, not the team. And also that player will win two tickets to Lanny's Clock Tower Cabaret, located at 16th and Arapahoe, underneath the Clock Tower. So, Kat, why don't you go ahead and explain the game? Ahem. You are going to perform an improvised one-act play in which, in which you must play the same character the entire time. There will be no improv edits allowed, no sweeps, tap-outs, etc. For an information-gathering game at the beginning, you will scene paint based on the suggestion. We will be looking for strong characters with wants and relationships with the other characters. 
And this form is based on the form that CAT's team does in the factors. Yes. Uh, to get started, we need a suggestion that both teams will base on. What do you get usually for the factors? A location. A location. So where is some place that would fit on stage? No, not Montana, but and not a bathroom. But some place that would Bollywood? Bobby. <laughs> well, Bollywood's really big. <laughs> <laughs> Grocery store. I heard a living room, so a living room. All right, and lights up. <laughs> Tina, I am. Um I'm sorry. That's all that's all I wanted to hear. Dean, that's that's perfect news. You know what? It's it's okay. Sometimes we 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 hurt the neighbors' feelings by blaring our music too loud and it's not your fault. Dean Dean, I'm gonna get that, okay? You might as well get it. Alright. Come on in. <laughs> 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 come on in, you guys. It's so good to I'm so glad you could come over. Welcome to our home. Bob, it's so water bay. This music is out of control. <laughs> we are trying to watch days of our lives, and you guys just can't keep it down. I've been trying to tell her to keep it down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, you guys, if if this is going to keep up in the neighborhood, then we're taking your Celine Dion disc and we're out of here. We can't get crazy now. Bob, 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 that's, Bob, Bob, that's where you come from. Bob, Bob, Dean got that for me for a wedding. That was 1595. That was a lot of money back then, you know? <laughs> She's not even that good, okay? She's not. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Whoa! Tina, it's okay. You'll be fine, Gary. You just sit down. They're talking crazy talk now. They're saying hurtful mean things. I still love you. Thank you, Tina. It's okay. You guys, it isn't about what wonderful candy party people you are. Because we hold candy parties in this building. <laughs> <laughs> But we're moving, not because not because of you guys. Me and Betty love you, holy cow. Yeah. I don't want you guys to move. It's the effing music. <laughs> Such language, you know? If you don't like Celine, you cannot like us. <laughs> oh. <sighs> you, you, that candy party was so great! <laughs> Thanks for your help, 
crazy neighbors that come in and try to burst up our stuff, break our, our wonderful Selena albums and CDs. We can hear you talking. Do you not know how to turn it down? <laughs> okay. All right, we've got the cops here. And I didn't want to do this, okay? But Selene Dion is Canadian, all right? That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, make your illegal gummy bears and get on out of here because we ain't party to your kind of people no more. They can't take the gummy bears? Emma will get you your own. They can't, they can't take the gummy bears. It's okay, Emma. It's okay. It'll be fine. Open the bag. Open the bag. Get my home. No. Here you go. Alright. 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 I loved it. Uh, anytime you got Canada and Gummy Bears in the same scene, it was me. Uh, Maggie, I really liked your cop a lot. Um, you came in, you took charge of what was happening right there. Um, obviously, you had had many complaints and sort of took charge of the, of the crime scene, as we say. But what I really like is that you died really fast. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of players will refuse to die, they'll hack and cough and god, what else they'll do. But uh, that was really good, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, first off, I would like to say this is not the first time somebody has died over Celine Dion. There's a lot of truth in there. Natalie, I really liked uh, your subtleties with your character. Uh, the relationship that you had with Jerry as a couple, I think the, the choice when you were bringing in the bag of candy and you were just like, why aren't you helping me, added a nice little level of depth to your relationship. Carl, well, I've never been to a candy party. <laughs> Ashley convinced me I want to go. <laughs> All right. Um, Aaliyah, I, you know, you came in, you're John John's uh, a partner or cohabitator or whatever it was, and you're breathing hard. Um, 
But I, I found myself looking for notes to write down for you because I felt like they weren't adding a lot. And when you get six, seven people on stage, it's harder to always be adding things. But sometimes you just gotta add some stuff. So, um, and then uh, Jerry, um, I liked that. Uh, I liked uh, your stuff and your character. I really liked your character. But I felt like when you came out, you just like told y'all, and you just kind of like just kind of echoed things and yes did, but you didn't add things. They didn't probably want to build on everything that's said. You wanted yes and. And I felt like you were just doing a lot of just yep, told you, yep, see, okay. Um, and the other thing was is. Um, um, you know that she was looking for real um, characters and things like that, and you came up with a joke like that spot. You know, someone just killed a cop on your on your floor. You know, well, that spot's never going to get out of the carpet. Um, that's a joke, and you know, it's like that's the last thing you're going to be worried about. Um, you know, and other than that, I thought it was very fun. But I like the scene a lot, and uh, you guys are heading back to the isolation chamber. <laughs> suggestion for a location is a living room. Lights up. There's a really ratty, disgusting brown couch sitting over there. There's stains all over the carpet. Some look like soda. Some, we're not really sure what they are. There is an exquisite piece of furniture right there. There's a large window overlooking the next door estate. There's a disco ball. <laughs> the walls are colored lime green. There's a row of plants on the back, some plastic, some not. There's an old poster in the back, too, of a, a Marlboro man. <laughs> One of the plants is a really big tomato plant. The floor is littered, littered with camel catch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> My winnings! Oh, yay! <laughs> we play penny poker more often. She's playing penny poker with her hundreds again, Dad. <laughs> Don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> I like the way money feels in between my fingers. We need them for our smokes. <laughs> well, I want to give them to my Barbies so that they have money to buy their hotel room. You know what, daughter? That will teach you a valuable lesson in economics. I support it. You guys let her do whatever she wants. Boy, I have to agree. Tell Grandpa. <laughs> I'm sick of all of you sitting around here playing poker like there's nothing going on in the world. Sitting here on this ratty old brown couch, not letting the visitors in. <laughs> I you put the disco ball on. <laughs> well, you made it from scratch. Oh, I just feel the light radiating from it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just stepped all over your cards. That's okay. <laughs> We're happy to have someone in here from the outside world. Someone who can tell us what it's like to not be in this dingy basement. Yeah, Miss Susan is, is special. That's right. She's special and we're damn pleased to have her in our house. Careful, that's my fair best. Your hair's <laughs> like a Barbie. <laughs> we need to start having a conversation about the outside world. <laughs> She's got to know about it. She does. Honey, the outside world is scary. The outside world is beautiful. It's a scary place. You need to take care of her. I want it to be beautiful. <laughs> she wants it beautiful. She's going to keep her beautiful dreams. See, I'm gonna start you off. 
these tickets, they can get you anything you want. Like a fleece that has Joe Camel on it. Can I my own Marlboro Man? You sure can. He's handsome. But that might contradict because it's a different brand. <laughs> 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 I've got words with you. What? Well. Hello, are you hurt? I told you the world is a scary place. I'm the first aid! Lloyd's got it. Got one 
in it. My brown couch! All those things in one location can sometimes be tough, but I thought there were a lot of fun characters. Um, Asa, I loved how honest your character's reactions were. I felt like that was a real guy, even though he was very quirky, very weird, uh, and he kept going in and out of his own house. <laughs> but, uh, but every time something happened, had a real reaction to it and it was like he was just you know fed up with this family and I believe what he said they were very truthful things I wish that we could have seen more of him though because I know you were out there at the beginning and then left and came back in I would have loved to hear what he had to say at the very beginning of the scene when you were on the couch Thank you, Keith. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a new kind of PTSD for me right now. <laughs> um, you know, um, I really like the fact that, if, if, like um, Kat mentioned, a big scene like this with seven people in there, not a lot of square footage up here, and someone needs to do something that makes things stand out. And Jesse, you did a good job of bringing forth something that would bring this weird group and meld them together, the outside world. And then I especially appreciated the fact that you realized the only way this was going to get better is if you took that stiff body out <laughs> and that would necessitate going into that real world. So uh, it's really important to remember, if you're in a scene, up that stake and make something worthwhile, make something that people there and there will care about. It's great. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Rabinecki? Uh, that was a really fun scene. Um, uh, Kate, I really like that you brought in a juxtaposition to the rest of the family which is somebody who has, like, some sort of value for health. <laughs> which was nice, because all these people are just running around smoking. I can see the smoke in the air, and then you bring in this vegetable casserole, which is a really great gift to bring in, because it can kind of, it, if it's taken one way, it can be, you know, it can change characters. So I thought that was a really nice gift. And you took a needle to the neck, which is never easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Anderson. I thought it was a scary basement. <laughs> I just don't think I want to go in there. But some of the stuff was actually true. Like Lindsay, when I was a kid, I used to lick wounds. Because improvisers write their own lines, uh, seeing an improviser leave the stage is like the rarest thing to see. So, uh, uh, Travis, you started out with the trick character, <laughs> and um, you know the, the the difficult part is when you have a character that has a physical disability like that. It's uh, making sure that you don't make fun of the character's disability. And I, I actually thought you actually kind of pulled it off. I didn't feel like you're, although it what became like you know. It could have been a PSA for not smoking. <laughs> and I didn't understand you when you said camel bucks. I was like, look, it's camel bags. I thought it was a bunch of water bottles. <laughs> camel bucks. It's like, I know a camel bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette, uh, I love the way you were going for the relationship right away. I love the way when Lauren walked in, you had an emotional uh, reaction to her right away. 
Um, you started to say throw her some dollar bills, and maybe she'll come up, and I was confused by that line. Um, and then, uh, but I like that you're protecting some people in the family, and you didn't like some other people in the family. Um, but I felt like you were yelling a lot. And it was seven to be on stage, sometimes you have to yell and be heard. So that's what I got. All right, we're going to bring everybody else back on stage. Let's give another round of applause for all our players. So, what's happening now is our five judges are going backstage to deliberate. They're going to pick their three favorite players from our immunity challenge. And of those three, they're going to choose one to win immunity, which means that they cannot go home tonight. They're guaranteed to come back next week. So. While they're doing that, we're going to have a Q&A. <laughs> Hi, players. Hi. Oh, I love this. It's like teaching again. So, your immunity challenge was to do a one-act play. Now, for those of you who have seen the Factors play, the Factors is the team that Kat Bond coaches, they do an improvised one-act play. So basically, you did a modified Factors form. How, are any of you on the Factors? Do you? What was that like? Um, it's it's hard to not know how to edit when you're not used to doing a one act play, and um, I was like hyper aware of that because if you've never done it before, it's hard to know when uh -huh. it's appropriate to come and go. Anybody else who had a fun time? Yeah, Travis, talk to me. I, I really love one act scenes just because you're able to develop characters better. Uh -huh. and it's like you're able to establish relationships and just see where it goes. And you don't know what camel bucks are, is that correct? No, I know what camel bucks are, it's just my mom is out there and I don't want her to know. <laughs> I think you just played your hand. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Who else had a fun time? Yeah, Ashley. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. I liked it because you had to have real motivation for interacting with people, for leaving, for coming in, you know. So you had to, it had to be real because we couldn't edit it. Anybody have kind of a hard time? You want to talk about hard time? Yeah, Kate. I noticed I was kind of in my head as far as like, oh, I think we need a plot. We need like a beginning, middle, end. Like, uh -huh. I can't, like, how are we going to have a plot? It's improvised. So, that was <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, for those of you who may not be familiar with our improv terminology, do you want to describe what in your head means to you? Uh, it means I was thinking about stuff instead of just being just in the moment, I guess. Planning ahead planning doesn't ahead. work so well. Uh, want to do why it. not? Why, do, why does planning ahead not work when you're doing it? It's not, for me, it's because it takes away from the group mind, which is that like, feeling between everybody and a flow of things. And if you're trying to think your way through it, it just puts a eyelash on it all. It just blows it up. Well, yeah, because nobody else on, on yeah. the team is thinking what you're thinking. Yeah. Right? Right. So that they can't come with you because you're <laughs> way over here instead of dwelling in the moment and listening and reacting to what the other Team members, I think. Well, I was just, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so also, I mean, if you're planning ahead, you're not in the moment, so you're kind of robbing the, the present. And um, then, whatever you're planning ahead, that it's 100% chance that that's not going to be the plan when you get to that spot. <laughs> so it's a fruitless plan. So instead of being in the moment right now on stage, we're in the future. So we should be in the future. I think it was a cool choice to do World Wars, which is super fast and jokey, and then do the one act. Because they're like opposite ends yeah. of the spectrum. And you know? see, World Wars is the kind of game that they would play on Platypus Surprise, which is coached by Mr. Ryback over here. And both Platypus Surprise and Factors play on Thursday nights with Bobon. Come back. Thursday nights. <laughs> they don't play every Thursday, so don't come to me and go, and you went to a show and they weren't there, and say, just keep going until you see <laughs> I don't want any angry people at <laughs> So, who thinks, oh, actually, let me ask this first. Uh, you guys, some of you know each other from before, some of you don't. What's it like to have to do a form and play with other people that maybe you don't have any experience playing with before? Is that cool, is that hard? No, it's really, really cool um, to trust a stranger, and I think that's a really, really cool lesson in improv. We get to, you know, all of us were strangers at one point, or you know, and I think it's really cool. 
<laughs> Was that a jab? <laughs> Our judges are back. Yeah. Well, it's time for judgment. <laughs> um, we really liked both scenes. We thought we were both fun. And uh, Kat was very gratified to give us two murders. <laughs> so she was very happy with that. Um, and Carl was happy about the spinning and the candy party. So, uh, so we all thought everybody great. But there's only uh, three of you that uh, actually, there was a lot of debate because a lot of names were being bantered around. Them. But three of you, uh, we all agreed, uh, or most of us agreed, uh, stood out. So, can I get up, please, on the line, Asa. Asa, we thought your kooky characters were great. We thought he was very quiet. We loved him a lot. We loved that you exited and entered. Uh, we just thought you played a really nice, three-dimensional, believable character who was could be weird and crazy hair. <laughs> uh, next person out is Kate. Kate, we loved your patience. We loved that you waited to come in, and then when you did come in, you took a counterpoint. You played a juxtaposition, uh, creating a status difference. And then when you were laid on the fact that you were a killer and you were poisoning them with carrots, you not only accepted it, but you said, if you tell them about the carrots, I'll kill you. <laughs> and you heightened it even more. And uh, the last one up there will be Natalie Kilkenny. with uh, Jerry was flushed out and how you uh, came up there and uh, you kept adding things. You came off and you bring back the candy and uh, you just kind of uh, were just driving pretty well there. Um, and you also had a nice character who was pretty uh, anchored in the relationships. Uh, only one of you can win a beauty. We'd be guaranteed to come back next week and be one step closer to our grand prize, which is what, Rice? A jumping into the unknown grand prize package. <laughs> Party for 12 at Sky Adventure Colorado and catering by Jason's Deli. So, <laughs> Miko, if I could get our graph it up, the winner of Lanny's Clock Tower Cavalry Immunity Challenge tonight, sponsored by. Oh, it's gone again. <laughs> is Kate. Immunity and two tickets to Lanny's Clock Tower Cabaret. So we're going to take a quick intermission. Ten minutes. Concessions are in front of you. Bathrooms are behind you. 